before we talk about the WWE draft, I feel like we got to talk about the NFL draft a little bit because <laughs> did you guys see Tony Khan last <laughs> night and what is going on? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Tony Khan reminded me of I remember watching there was like a, there was like a WCW event a long time ago and Hawk Road Warrior Hawk was supposed to had like an arm injury and he was facing Haku. I just remember this for some reason. I think maybe it came up on OSW and it was amazing. He was supposed to have this crazy arm injury and he was supposed to sell it and the entire match he was just using his arm. He was just like, yeah, clothesline with the arm, injured arm and like not selling it. And, uh, you know, and he was facing like, oh, I guess Mang. Tony Khan <laughs> with the neck brace on just, here's oh, yeah. a full <laughs> range of motion. Here is my neck just <laughs> going everywhere. And I was like, what? Like, just, I mean, I love that he's trying to keep kayfabe alive, but like, yeah, this man was pictured <laughs> just going like this. <laughs> Yeah, it's like you got to wear the neck brace to sell it, but you got to know how to sell it as well, too. Yes, yes. Yeah, I like that somebody mentioned his uh, father kind of looked like a 70s heel almost. <laughs> <laughs> and Just behind him with the biggest guys, smile, like he was behind it. I don't know if you guys, because this is obviously we're doing some deep cuts, and I like that we're bringing up stuff. I don't know if you guys remember a bully Busick, but somebody had put. Oh yes. my gosh, yeah, Charlie yeah, Busick. His body and said he's looking. Oh <laughs> no, I never even thought of that. Either, oh, God. Saw it, I'm like, I can see that. Oh, <laughs> How great gosh. would it be if Tony Khan's dad was the one funding the elite on TV <laughs> and like Tony Khan's dad comes out as like the leader of all these guys oh, and just, my gosh. I would almost enjoy it more because then it hits that stratosphere of ridiculous. <laughs> Yeah. Past kind of like what the fuck's going on because Sean, we got to ask you what was your opinion of them showing the footage a couple weeks ago? Oh, so, it really put me off. Yeah, it it yeah it put me off too because it was reactionary to something WWE does or that happened in the WWE stratosphere, you know, like and not even necessarily, but like CM Punk getting interviewed, getting asked about it, and then answering it. He doesn't strike me as someone. CM Punk doesn't strike me as someone that's going to go. Uh, no comment. You know, like he's gonna yeah. be just like he. I I know a lot of dudes like that. He comes from like a punk rock background, right. and those dudes are not like, uh, oh, no comment, guys. They're like, no, I'll be straight up and I'll tell you exactly what I think and what the truth is to right. me. You know, and so their reaction to that it mostly disappointed me because I think that AEW is better when they concentrate on their stratosphere. You know, like I think their their wrestling, their product is incredible. I, I think they need to like stretch out their stories a little more. I think that's one of the things I, they do tell stories, but they're very quick. And then you're like on to the next one, you know, but they like, they showed that footage and I thought it would make some more sense. Uh, if they just moved that footage, they like had jungle boys. Well, Jack Perry, I guess as a complete surprise showing up and they didn't like sort of like tease it, you know, just showed up. They ripped his mask off. I thought it was really cool. how They revealed him security coming in pull the mask off and then Jack Perry starts giving out, you know, skip that week and, and go, I'm going to show the footage and I'm going to tell you why I didn't right. deserve this, you know? And then there's like a good reason to show the footage storyline wise, not like, uh, Oh, we're grasping at straws. Oh, we were distracted and FTR and you, <laughs> we were distracted. So you beat us and we don't want to shake your hand. You know, like I think if they, if Jack Perry had a storyline, he showed up, complete surprise, big pop for it, and then they could work off that the week after that dynamite. This dynamite from yesterday, they'd go, hey, I'm going to show the footage. I'm sick of this. I'm sick of everyone talking about this. I'm going to show the footage. I didn't do a thing. I was right all along. And now, all of a sudden, the context is better walking into that. And then a week later, they can you know beat up Tony Khan or whatever they need to do. <laughs> 100 yeah, yeah yeah what you propose almost like a drew mcintyre type heel where i'm, I'm telling you the truth this right. is what right you can right kind of, and he's doing the best work of his career right yeah. and also the timing of that footage also kind of made adam copeland look bad who had just responded <laughs> with this where anti tribalism it's like why yeah. did you make poor adam copeland i I, I saw you guys i saw the video how a how Tony Khan let us down. And I went, okay, I, <laughs> I think I know exactly what point this is. Uh, yeah, because, yeah, Adam Copeland literally came out there 
right. rah rah speech and everything, and everyone's like, "Yep, it's it's Edge, it's Adam, it's Cope." We okay, yeah, you got to respect his. And then they just undid it a week later. It right. was crazy. Yeah, I will say one thing, and I know this wasn't what they're going for, but <laughs> when somebody sells a punch to the stomach with a flat back bump, I will laugh at that every day. <laughs> I know we were talking about that last night because I asked somebody at work. I'm like, you don't think like he he took a bump like he didn't know how, and he's like, well, that's kind of the point. And I'm like, yeah, but they had all day to practice it. Like it was just the funniest, like toppling over. You punch my seven year old kid in the stomach, he's gonna grab his gun. (laughs) (laughs) And it it was wild because I thought Tony Khan said he was never gonna become an on air character. And then it's like, we're already going down this slippery slope. And Sean, back to what you said about the footage, if you had done it that way, it would have been less like proving CM Punk's point. It could have made Jack Perry look delusional saying, you know, I didn't do anything. I didn't provoke him. Like, look at how he went at me. And then with no sound, I like that booking a lot more. If only that's been the problem with AEW is just not, I don't know. I guess not putting that extra layer of thought into it mm. or giving it some nuance. Well, I think they're also I think they're also like looking at the ratings and Tony wants to and Tony wants to no matter no matter what anyone says, he wants to pop that rating. You know, that's that's how that works for him. And I mean, they're, you know, they got a lot of headlines the week after WrestleMania, which is like okay, I get it, you know. But uh I I think that if he I, I, I think a lot of times I see stories that are just really, really quick. Jericho and Hook, for instance. That was like three weeks. You could have, I mean, A, I don't really want to see Jericho that much anymore, to be honest. But like, you know, like he's done his time. But um, but like, I, I like where they're going with it. I just think they could have stretched out because it was like, Hook and Jericho, team, one week. Uh, team, the second week. Oh, betrayal third week <laughs> we have a match at dynasty it's like what okay this is too quick i like my head spins a lot at the storylines yeah i think if they just like stretch it out and like really think and put that extra layer of thought into it I, I i agree it's i think that product would be so incredible and now they have so many so many talents right. I, I they've always had a lot of talent and now they have osprey okada it's yeah. like i would even say monet but like like incredible talent, you know, as long as Monet stays healthy, like this, I mean, this roster is crazy. Yeah. It's nice to have this uh, company out there with all this other wrestling, these great stars. I think it's just, yeah, some of the stuff they're doing, it's unfortunate because we want to see them do well. Like I want to be back when I was a kid where we had a healthy WWE slash and WCW, right. Where we had these promotions and when they do things like that, I, I'm a hardcore fan. I'm still going to watch you, but right. it concerns me overall. Like, I'm like, oh, that's not where I'd like to see that go. Yeah. And it makes like, you know, uh, the Rampage and Collision, you know, are things that I found myself watching them less yeah. over the last few months. It's not, but I watch Dynamite every week, you know, uh, but it makes, but I think it, it like, I'm going to just watch Dynamite. That's my Wednesday routine, you know, like, which is fine. But if you're giving me a compelling television, I'm going to go, oh, well, I got to watch. I, I might even have to watch Rampage, you know, like, but I'll definitely watch Collision, you know, like, and so I think that's, I think that's where they need to get, you know, real people back in. It's like, no, 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 watch all the product. And, you know, this is, it'll be compelling across all three shows. I think there's a thing too, and I think I've talked about a little bit with Joe before, but initially being the new kid on the block, they had this real passionate fan base they would travel everywhere, sell arenas everywhere. And I think that was in part because of what WWE was doing was not resonating with anybody at that time with Vince. And so we had this really hardcore fan that would do it. I think after a while, you've kind of burnt out that fan base a little bit just because how many, how much money can you keep spending all the time? You see, though, the big events with Sting and some of these still do pretty well if they have a reason. Wembley obviously would do very well. Different market, of course. But – And I think now it's the question of, like, what WWE's done, why they've got hot, is because with the new creative direction, they're bringing in new fans. You got Rock in there, and they brought new fans, and they got – and that's kind of what they have to find a way to do. We got Okada. We got this – let's try to find – to bring in some different fans that are going to be just as passionate and hopefully with good booking, 
You can get the ratings to see them steadily come up. A great TV deal in the next year. But yeah, I mean, right now, I still wish I love it. But I mean, like I said, it probably wasn't the reaction they wanted. We're laughing at it. We're talking about, you know, like, <laughs> sure that's not what they wanted, right? But I mean, the cell was amazing. <laughs> the cell was amazing. It was incredible. Uh, yeah, I mean, I agree with you. I uh, All those points are really I good I feel like that's too. forever going to be a gift. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, that I mean, I, I, Dave, I, I completely agree with you. I think, Dave, I was just gonna say, I completely agree with you. And I oh, think yeah. the challenge here is, um, I, I think the challenge is just don't get, don't, don't pretend that WWE doesn't exist. Sure. Like, give it a, a year or two. Just right. pretend they don't exist. Stop reacting to everything. Triple H says something. Will Ospreay's got to say something. It's like you are the baby face of this company and you're gonna and wb is gonna want you even more in four years holy crap you know like they're gonna be like we need this guy because he's gonna be the cody of their you know federation soon so i mean you know they uh just leave them out of it and right. move on you know and do your thing and just make good stories and make compelling television and make it work. And then uh, I think AEW is going to find that base start coming back and it won't be as like divisive, you know? I agree. And one more thing, Joe, before we move on, I just want to say this too, just two things. One, if you notice what WWE does to it, the contract, they're responding in interviews to questions and they'll make this comment and they're not actually adding anything on their TV about AEW. That really doesn't happen. Right. Hell, they even congratulated Sting on a retirement afterward, which was very rare. Although right. when Pat McAfee did say it was a hell of a match, Michael Cole segue faster. <laughs> yeah, he's like, okay, move on. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. We, don't, we don't go that far. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, but I would say, you know, as somebody who runs a business too, and, um, you know, I have a bread route and stuff, and just talk about it from a business standpoint too, I think what we're talking about is pretty basic business. We try to concentrate on what we're doing. We're not worried about what the next guy's doing. We may pay attention. Right. But you're trying to be, oh, okay, what can I do to be better? And, you know, I think that's pretty basic. <laughs> it should be. Yep. 